Uh, Razvax here. For how compelling 2 to 10 or 2 to 12 scopes are, often known as MPVOs, there are surprisingly very few of them that check the entire range of boxes. Half are glorified hunting scopes, and the other half are downscale, two pound bench rest shooting long range systems. That leaves us with less than one third, yes, that math makes absolute sense, don't check it, to cover the SPR rifle concept, a sort of build for 5.56 rifles meant to increase consistency at range without giving up the functionality of a general purpose rifle system. Limited option here means you're almost never gonna get what you want and you're gonna have to go for compromises. And some people are beginning to question why we're picking two to tens or MPVOs in the first place. Why not completely nix the 2X low end and get way more capability on the high end since the low end is actually probably gonna already be covered by a red dot sight anyway. Wouldn't a three to 18X with a red dot sight be objectively the better choice? That and more today on Brass Facts. So today's focus is going to be the 3 to 18X GLX from Primary Arms, though I'll be referencing several other options throughout the video. For the record, this thing was sent to me by Primary Arms. I got the scope for free. I have affiliate links as well down below, so if you wanna buy some and give me a little bit of kickbacks, that's also appreciated. Hence this disclaimer, these things do in fact make me biased, so keep that, on, keep that in mind as you watch throughout these videos for any reviewer. Uh, hopefully I've built up enough of a reputation that you can still trust what I have to say, but it's an important disclaimer to get that out there nonetheless. All right, let's take a look at the 3 to 18 concept over the MPVO. The upsides of a 3 to 18 over a 2 to 10 MPVO are as plain as day but it's worth diving into nauseating detail because that's what I do here on this channel and I presume that's why you're here. Unless that's not why you're here, then dude, I'm so sorry the algorithm really let you down on this one, brace for impact. First off, let's talk about magnification. Yeah, no shit, I told you we'd be pedantic, but mo magnification, mo better. As a wide internet sage once said regarding the adage, one X magnification for every hundred yards, Yep. Yeah, okay, I, if anybody ever comes out with that, like, hey, all you need is 1x per 100 yards, you should kill them. You should kill them for saying that. That's what I think. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, yes, obviously 10x, 6x, or even m irons are capable of engaging out to an ever-increasing anecdotal range because this is the internet, and it's the shooter, it's not the rifle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, our max range is technically dictated by the rifle, not the piece of glass on top but we live in the real world. Practically speaking, you need to see what you wanna shoot, but you also need to be able to distinguish details on targets, around the targets, and more. I've done the majority of my long range shooting on 10X MPVOs or even 4X LCANs, but I'll be the first to admit, stepping behind an 18X makes life a lot easier. I can see Mirage, wind interacting with these stupid dash sagebrushes and half dead weeds. I can call hits, misses, and I can even distinguish where precisely on the target I'm pointing. In the context of long range shooting, it's all about consistency and more magnification to a degree does allow that. So it's important, even though the section was pretty short, more magnification is really better hands down when shooting at range. And it's the entire reason why you want a three to 18 to begin with. I know you were riveted by the extreme dynamics of MPVO versus three to 18 but we gotta interrupt you to pay the bills. This video was sponsored by Venture Surplus, a online retailer of surplus gear. Surplus gear can be really useful to help fulfill that backbone of your kit. Thermal layers, bivvies, ponchos, uh, combat layers, thermal, la I already said thermal layer. Jesus Christ, I'm so bad at going down a list. All, all exist as boxes to be filled quite effectively by surplus gear, also doing so at a massively reduced cost. Anyway, so Venture Surplus gear, Military style gear, either used or new, who cares? They're gonna end up used anyway if you actually use your gear for a low price, perfect for a prepared citizen on a budget. Go ahead, check it out, link down below. And now back to the riveting dynamics, MPVOs and three to 18s. 
In a perfect world, reticles should be a non-issue. We have first focal plane, we have the technology, they should be usable at all ranges, but we don't live in a perfect world now, do we? We live in a world where 5.56 still costs 50 cents per round, Halo 5 exists, peanuts are no longer served on any flights I go on, and manufacturers struggle to care or want to make a reticle design that are both capable on the low end magnification as well as obviously the high end. On the long range front, we'll get into close range later, the GLX 3 to 18 succeeds very well. We have a decent center aiming point that has to of course be a minuscule chevron because it's primary arms, but it's really, really small so it works. We also have a clean Christmas tree style design with wind holds, auto ranging and more. Read the manual. I really dig this reticle. It's decently capable long range but also stops well short of ending up looking like a Tremor 3 reticle, which just feels like a brutal visual postmodern commentary on utility. I mean, the Tremor 3s are cool, but for this context, I think it's a tad overkill. Okay, so the upsides are fairly straightforward. It's basically in the name, 18X, and a reticle to match. Impact. Good. Hi guys. The downsides. Most of them are what I would consider double-edged sword-like, you know, part of the cost of doing business as you tack on more magnification. But because this is my video and we're comparing this to MPVOs, we're gonna call them downsides. The big one, once again, is in the name. It's the 3X of the 3 to 18. Many people call it functionally analogous to, you know, 2 or 2.5X because, you know, numbers are kind of close. But at least in the context of unstabilized shooting and running guns, it's importantly not to mentally round down and call a 3.6X is basically 2X. The 3X here is also presented far worse as all 3 to 18s have a very long range configured reticle design, which means on the 3X we're, we're distinctly lacking and have a very fine aiming point. MPVOs and generals have a consistent experience throughout having reticles designed. They both use the 2 or 2.5x as well as the high end. That's simply not true with the 3 to 18s across the board. Now, most people will be relying on their red dot, piggyback, or offset, but it's important to note that with the MPVOs, you have the option of using your low magnification aggressively, and some of you will find you're going to be subconsciously defaulting to it quite often especially when you want to access a much flatter shooting arc that piggyback dots struggle to provide, or maybe your dot goes down, or maybe your porthole shooting, or you're in an unconventional shooting position, whatever. The 3 to 18, of course, you can do the same. Remember, it's more difficult, you have more magnification, and you have a reticle not suited for the task. So not a deal breaker by any means, but it's absolutely something to consider depending on the style of shooting you prefer to do. We, well, but we, I mean, the scope engineers, have done a lot of work to get all of this magnification on the high end, including giving up on the low end, a reticle design for the high end, we gave up on the 2X, uh, we even have a larger tube diameter for clarity. By all accounts, we're all in on that magnification. But the 18X on a GLX 3 to 18 kind of sucks. Yeah, I don't know if it's the aggressive zoom ratio of 6x, I don't know if it's the engineering limitations of just increasingly zooming in on something, but it's literal soup status. And no matter what you do with the diopter and parallax, you will never really exit the land of the soup at the 18x. Which, for those in the know, you'd think I'd love. But no one, in this context, I don't like it. As you dial through the range, you'll simply find past about around 14x, the optic really begins to start coming off the rails, and while not technically true, past this it reminds me a lot of just digital zoom, where your image ceases to increase in clarity or resolution and it kind of feels like you're just zooming in on an existing image. Combine this chicken noodle soup with the brutal exit people at the 18x of 2.4 millimeters, exactly the same as something you'll find on a 1 to 10x LPVO, and you'll see that the entire 18x experience is kind of horrific. Now, you can use it, you can use a lot of things, and I've used it quite a bit but it's distinctly frustrating because we gave up all that we did to get this 18x and we end up with a yeah it's okay 18x that should have been the design purpose of the scope you add in the fact that honestly 2 to 12x mpvos exist and that performance gap closes even more now let's pump up brakes real quick this is something true with all 18x scopes with the 5HD series from Leopold, who are known for being glass and coating wizards, combining with a $2,000 budget, and you'll actually find the same deal. As you approach that 18X, literal soup. The result most of the time, for the same reason 25X users typically actually dial back to 20X, most 10X LPVOs are dialed back to 8X, 
you too on a three to 18 will find you're using the 12 to around 15 X range far more often. And due to the first vocal plane design works actually surprisingly well. In line with speaking of similarities to $2,000 scopes, the GLX actually does a pretty good job at keeping up with the premium competition on the glass front. Unlike with LPVOs, the bar between $400 and $2,000 LPVOs is actually really close. Now calm down, yeah, calm down. I hear it, the just as good gang cheering and the Night Force gang or something like that booing. Actually just the same as you compare them side by side. There is nuance and there is clarity difference. There's less color separation, they look better, but it is very subtle. More and more as I dabble into this long range world, at least for sub 1000 yard shooting, which is entirely my experience by the way, at least for sub 1000 yard shooting, which is entirely my experience, the difference seems to be largely coding, build quality, color richness, and a reduction in that sort of haze you notice at you know range that impacts all scopes. In terms of capability, your ability to see targets at say 500 yards and beyond and engage it, the GLX 3 to 18 keeps up just fine with all other 3 to 18s, including the pricey ones. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not a glass snob, but I struggle to find a scenario where myself and others notice a distinct difference between this and a 3.6 to 18 Leopold, which is a $2,000 scope. All right, wait. We gotta talk about weight. Dude, you need to lose some, oh right, we're talking about, we're talking about scopes. Oh, oh, that's a big boy. For the GLX series specifically, we have a direct weight comparison from the 2.5 to 10X to the 3 to 18X, from roughly 22 to around 29. That eight ounces cannot be understated. With the inclusion of a primary arms PLX mount and a piggyback dot, which you have to have, remember, because we need it, this basically just an upgrade optic package ends up weighing 40 ounces. Dude, my dog weighs 40 ounces. Wait, no, 40 pounds, whatever, same thing. The primary arms 3 to 18 is also significantly larger and will begin to really become this finger munching trap uh, on shorter rail systems. Now in the market, we do have a range of dynamics. The Leopold 2 to 10 X is almost actually identical in cost and weight compared to the 3.6 to 18 X version. That's more so of the case of the MPVO Leopold being kind of heavy and lackluster by comparison. No matter how we slice it, universally most MPVOs are just around 22 ounces and all of the 3 to 18s are kissing that 30 ounce mark. This means as we switch to the 3 to 18, there is a significant bulk and weight penalty that we are paying. Ryan's getting absolutely sloshed on some monster. We're basically at the beach, except it's it's been a little warm the last millennia. That Radical dude. So which one of these is the best? Neither. Obviously, these are different tools for different jobs. I just want to illustrate that a 3 to 18 isn't just a clear upgrade over, over two to 10 scopes in aggregate. Obviously you can nitpick the features as this was a broad comparison and I'm sure you can find a heavy two to 10 X and a light three to 18 to compare, but by and large, the comparisons I talked about here hold true. The biggest takeaway here is, turns out, like when you go from an LPVO to a low-end MPVO, no, you didn't crack the code and get an objectively better scope. You just got a different capability set. All those little insignificant downsides that you gained and upsides that you lost, well, those do in fact add up to create a completely different dynamic or optic system. As per usual, we end up with different tools for different tasks. So the question you should ask instead of which is best is, which is the best for the task at hand? Now, this is very much opinion. Some people value magnification to an extreme degree, and some people value not having to deal with a red dot sight strapped to their rifle. You name it, this is just my take on the matter. I think in the context of the ever popular 556 SPR precision gun, it becomes tempting to chase long range performance. It's addicting every time you hear steel thwang at five seconds after you shoot. And every time your skill increases, you want to add to that magnification window because magnification is king here and it makes you more capable. But let's reiterate the design goal of most SPR setups. It's an increase in range consistency of the standard fighting carbine while preserving close range capability of said carbine. While in this dynamic, we certainly could add more magnification to increase our range, it's important not to forget the goal is to retain a lightweight, nimble fighting rifle. You need to still be able to hang with the boys with their 11 fives and such. A 12 pound rifle before you even put a suppressor on ain't that. Now, this doesn't necessarily preclude the usage of a 3 to 18, but it does cut heavily into your setup budget. 
two pounds of optic is a big deal and that will vote off a lot of other stuff on your rifles off the island. Furthermore, if you're like me, where the red dot on top is more of a utility thing instead of something you typically use, then two to 2.5X simply just becomes mandatory. So at least for me, the three to 18 scope represents an unneeded, though appreciated capability gain at an unacceptable weight, optical, and other cost on 5.56 style rifles. Now, that's not to say that these things don't belong on 5.56 rifles. There are absolutely dudes out there smacking shit at a thousand yards with a three to 18 scope on a 5.56 gun and getting her done. But to me, that represents a novelty, a cool thing you can do with a weapon system, but maybe not a capability that you particularly need as a prepared citizen. But I don't know, that's just a theory, a brass facts theory. Uh, take it or leave it. Actually, before I'm sending you on your way, this was a discussion disguised as the fact that this was actually a GLX 3 to 18 review. So real quick to finish that off, if you liked the 2.5 to 10X GLX like it did, but you want more magnification, the 3 to 18 is a pre clear choice here. We have all the things we love from the 2.5 to 10X, the great turret design that is honestly flirting with turret quality, uh, three times the price tag. We have a $800 price tag, which is frankly impressive for the package at hand, acceptable glass quality, and now we have it all shifted into a long range package. And while I do really like the quality on Vortex scopes, I think this actually beats it out because Vortex refuses to modernize their stuff. The major downsides of this thing are obviously the weak 3X and the 30 ounce weight, color and image degradation on the higher end, but remember, sort of par for the course. I also have this slight issue where I constantly struggle to really focus this as easily as other scopes throughout the you know focus range, but that may just be me. Anyways, decent scope, just be sure that it's actually what you want. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Good job, Nova. Lie down, lie down. Yeah, you're so good. Nova's helping you so much right now. Good job.